Hi, Avijit. Uh, welcome to our platform. Uh, thank you for taking out the time and joining us. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Congratulations on your uh, selection to XLRI, Avijit. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, how have the past few days been? <laughs> Very uncertain, but yeah, happy year, I guess. After everything is settled, yeah, feels much better. But it could have been better, I guess. <laughs> So, uh, Avijit, uh, take us through your journey. Where have you born, brought up, and then uh, your schooling, undergrad, and all those things? So, um, actually, I was born in Aligarh. If you know, it's in UP, Uttar Pradesh. Thereafter, most of my life, uh, like uh, my family has lived in Kashipur. So now it's on the map. You must know. <laughs> so yeah, but uh, most of my education I have completed from Delhi itself. I went to Delhi in class sixth. I have lived in hostel ever since. So, uh, yeah, lot of things and during uh, that time. Living, I have lived independently most of the time. After that, uh, I did my engineering from Delhi College of Engineering and uh, DTU, Delhi Technological University now. Okay. And uh, um, then I worked with Hindustan Petroleum uh, Corporation as retail officer. And now, yes, I will be pursuing MBA from XLR, as you know. So, uh, when you, uh, I mean, there might have been a point in time where you thought that seriously you should be uh, going for MBA and you must have started your uh, preparation for the MBA entrance yeah. examinations. So when was that, uh, uh, when, when did that happen? And uh, from there, take us through your uh, journey till the time you gave the examinations. So Ajay, uh, if you must know that uh, initially when I uh, graduated from my engineering college, uh, I did not have any plans to pursue MBA initially. I, I, I wanted a good uh, job initially and with a good pay that's how usually things work uh, but uh, while i was working in Hindustan petroleum i slowly realized that i was getting inclined towards a lot of administrative and financial activities so in Hindustan petroleum i was uh, handling like the entire right the entire chhattisgarh region to be precise so there was a lot of administrative leverage and you know i learned a lot on the administrative front so Casually, I understood how management functions. Uh, I was in the administrative sector. So, yes, I met a lot of uh, central government employees due to various level of compliances activities that were involved while I was working in HPCL. During those times, um, actually, all this culminated like I had a lot of interest in economics from the like plus two. And, uh, but I could not pursue initially because I thought, okay, I'll just pursue engineering just like. <laughs> It was just a matter of time. So, yeah, and uh, that gradually culminated in my finance. And uh, if you know that I've already completed CFA level one. Yeah, yeah. so uh, firstly, I did that CFA investment foundations course just to test like the waters as to how good I am in this particular field. So my interest in management as well as finance it naturally culminated into this uh, MBA journey. But if you must know that uh, in, it was in 2018, end of 2018, uh, when uh, I had very clear ideas to what I have to do. I had to pursue finance first thing. That was the main goal. I initially applied abroad and to ISB, as I had already told you. So I got through uh, London School of Economics as well, and uh, I got through ISB too. ISB was the deferred admission offer. But uh, uh, I did not, I had not appeared for CAT and ZAT. Uh, I did appear for CAT in 2018, but I did not prepare. So it went like crazy bad. <laughs> so uh, after that, I uh, realized that I should give it a try once more. So I deferred my admission at LSC uh, and uh, ISB. And, uh, you know, I pursued uh, prep. So in 2019, I gave CAT. That's how uh, in January 2020 I did that. So now I'm here. Yeah. So uh, were you, I mean, while you're preparing, were you giving uh, mock examinations? And because a lot of times what happens is you get very low scores in mocks at times. And then yeah, that takes away 
that takes away your confidence so how did you handle those situations especially those lows uh, while preparing for the i know i know i guess that that happens to most of us i i if you know that you already know that uh, i started my preparation from october beginning so in june 2019 i gave my cf exam so i and while working i was working full time by that time and it it is really hectic in uh, retail uh, because there is always market and you know targets every week so i was uh, super exhausted with the work so i left my job in september end and first started but so initially i was really bad at quant section you must you might not really believe it <laughs> i mean i am an engineer and bad at quant and uh, verbal was like my forte from the very beginning because i like to read so ldi okay i was uh, in the mediocre range <laughs> i was going there but yeah like initially i uh, it was like i was scared uh, because i had left the job and i had to prepare everything and that's how it happened but uh, i have always been very positive about everything like whatever i pursue as we had already discussed that i have been a person who thinks like creative solutions will always come be it a pandemic be it any kind of problem you give me unemployment ratios you give me unemployment percentages it does not matter until unless the person knows what he is doing and there is ample number of opportunities if he or she wants to try so that's just how i always thought about pursuing these things so i was like okay i had a backup plan that okay i have lse okay don't worry about it <laughs> so and this is just like you try to keep yourself calm initially that you have a lot of time you have to understand that uh, whatever time you are putting in has to be very crisp like you cannot waste any time what like even if you are studying for 2 hours or 3 hours i don't study for 12 hours on a stretch and i don't recommend it either but what if i even if i first study 3 hours 4 hours 5 hours like it should be very focused kind of study and whatever you do you don't forget your mistakes that's how i mean in every mock i made a list of all the mistakes i did and what for the mistake i repeated so the mistakes i repeated saved me the most i mean i whenever i wrote them i i think you must have also known that you must have also made this uh, kind of uh, log of what kind of mistakes you are doing so i think the that, analysis where you're uh, uh, where you're spending more time on the wrong areas where you could have yes, yes, yes. Right i mean area. initially knowing where you are going wrong in the time management is the most important thing because there are some questions that get you hard on your ego <laughs> and i have absolutely right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh my god i mean in general i'm not able to solve this how is this even possible so you just sit there and you try to just solve it it is not like that you are not you should not marry your question you should not try to solve every question you should just go ahead with whatever you can understand and yeah definitely i would recommend that everyone should have a, an error log because i think that's the most important that's the last thing i always used to do every day from october 1st till 24th november or even till january i used to see my uh, error log book every day so sure. just browse through the pages every day okay, okay this is the mistake i have been committing quite a lot so i think that's one of the most important thing and uh, every mock is a learning experience i guess So, correct and i think really uh, you yeah you scored very well in your uh, xat score and i think uh, <laughs> ap- apart from cat uh, the additional section we have in uh, xat is the decision making section yeah yeah so how did uh, i mean did you specifically prepare anything for that or how, how did you go about it so uh, in the decision making section uh, i did not prepare like very specifically for that i was more focused on my because that's one section where you know you can score well and i mean you know how to <laughs> because you know if you have done the question right but in decision making section i was always very intrigued about it i enjoyed it like anything i i because i like reading as i have already told you i'm good with verbal so i just enjoyed reading the entire case study and you know thinking what what i could have done in that situation one thing i have realized is like my cfa prep did help me there because uh, in cfa you must uh, you might know that uh, there is an ethics section so i worked on the ethics section like anything because there was such a thin line between being ethical and unethical that always sometimes i just did not understand where i was going wrong 
so that's where i work the most as to what kind of things my own personality uh, you know your own ideas your ideology have shaped into you you have to understand that particular point in the ethics so dm section is mostly about ethics you have to understand every stakeholder and try to come up with the best solution with the most ethical you know what we say the gray areas of the solutions <laughs> it should not be a spontaneous solution it should be a well thought of and uh, i mean the most ethical and most understanding you have to understand each and every stakeholder involved with the problem so i've been very very excited like i just enjoy that section just way too much i i try to solve as many questions like when, even when i was lying down like like someone would read a book or you know just to improve i used to read these case studies of uh, the dm section okay because i enjoyed it it's it, it was just a simple thing that that is the reason why i could score well in zart because i was just enjoying the section because even the verbal section of zart i think you know that it is a little different from cat it is Correct. more on the artistic side of the language where you have to interpret what is being said so i have always been really you know intrigued by this kind of language so yeah i just enjoyed it way too much so <laughs> that helped me i guess yeah but for anybody who is trying to solve this section and get good like you know, she must understand first the stakeholder relationships like who all are the stakeholders and try to understand how uh, what are like what is the solution that can benefit all of them i know there will be solution that you know you can go up or down in certain manner and you, somewhere you might think it's practically not possible but you don't have to think that way you just have to be very very clear as to how it's going to affect everybody and you know least conflict that's all very well said very well said abhijit so abhijit uh, you got a very good uh, uh, zat score and there isn't much time be- uh, before your actual pis and other yeah things. so how uh-huh. did you uh, how did your pre- i mean how did you start preparing once uh, you know that you are going to get a good score did you start your preparations yes. right away or you are so, waiting for the results <laughs> no i i was waiting for the result because i am a person who you know i i make some benchmarks so whenever like i i gave my exams i was then i decided okay i'll take a leave for a while and you know start my prep but yes once the scores were out i had i knew that i have to prepare well so from the very big like i had a habit of reading so i have been reading newspaper like not that much in depth during my preparation but after i got these scores um i read newspapers like every day each and every line just you know trying to grasp what is happening and i'm very much uh, you know interested in finance so mint was one of the newspapers and economic times that i used to enjoy a lot so i get deeper and deeper into every aspect of the topic so if uh, i'm reading something and i come across certain words suppose yield curve so and if i don't understand what is happening with the yield curve at that point of time so i'll just go to internet and try to search over it so everything i whatever i did during that particular period of time it was you know an iterative process i you read a lot because in pi one of the things is they can ask you anything about general knowledge so you cannot be sure what is going to happen to you but one thing is for sure that they will definitely take that interview into that particular uh, area where you are interested like Correct. most of the, most of the interviews go that way some will definitely grill you on anything but yeah you can drive the interview in a certain manner i guess so yeah uh then like reading newspapers uh i very much had a very clear idea as to why i'm pursuing mba so why mba was never a problem for me like i had a very clear vision why i want to do mba so it was very clear that okay i want to enter into the finance industry my engineering background is not going to help me there because i was a civil engineer and uh, i had a cfa to prove my interest in the field then uh, i had a very clear idea that i am interested in equity and portfolio management so if anybody asked me anything about that i knew it so i think Uh, everything has to be very core coherent when it's about the pi so that's how i prepared said so whatever i say whatever i do must reflect on that you know particular day that uh, i know about the subject and what is happening correct correct abhijit i think you i mean since you are having the uh, right reason to do the mba and you are already in alignment with uh, what you wanted to do i think your pa 
uh, shouldn't have been much of a problem i mean there are other aspects like questions that yes, yes. Uh, would be coming up but then uh, your confidence aspect because of the decisions and choices that you are making is already taken care so abhijit i just want to understand how did this interest in finance start because you are a civil engineer from dc yeah, yeah. you started working <laughs> yeah. at uh, hpcl so how did this yeah. inclination start uh, towards finance yeah so uh, that uh, it started uh, as in, um, i when i was in plus 2 i took economics as one of the subjects so i was very much interested in economics and as a matter of fact i was planning to be economic from D. but as you know that spent and all they have like cut offs for 98 99 percentage i could not score that much so uh, but yeah i was uh, like at that point i was not very sure like what i would do after economic like pursuing economics so at that point i put it on hold but i used to read you know i like even in engineering you know that there are subjects like engineering economics and managerial economics that i kind of i took all the electives as much as i could regarding management and economics and there was always there at the back of it but once i started working there are a lot of financial decisions i had to take so while working in a place you have to capitalize on things you have to book expenditures you have to understand everything so basically i was doing some kind of accounting there and slowly and steadily it culminated into my you know getting interested into okay what is happening and when you have some money in your hand you just start thinking about your personal finances i guess that also was one of the factors you know that added to the whole scenario then i read a lot of novels on from peter lynch from Benjamin Graham from um, uh, reading about various autobiographies of various CEOs and just and just everything you know um, I think just you know merged together into this interest and then I tested the waters as I told you that with the investment foundation that whether I whether I am suited for this field just to know that okay if I can pursue it while working I will definitely able to pursue it you know if like I do it like full time. Correct, so correct. i just wanted to know how passionate i was about the fields and that's how it you know whole thing was unfolded yeah so i think uh, you are having the clarity of understanding uh, where you actually want it to be testing it out and then seeing whether it is mm-hmm. really your interest or not so that's a really good thing yeah. because uh, life is at the end of the day all about finding yourself and finding where your true interest is because yeah, you don't want to cl- climb the wrong i mean end up on the top of the wrong mountain so i think uh, yeah. those aspects while you i mean you tested out giving cfa and other examinations as well i think uh, yeah. that was uh, really good so avijit what i feel is uh, especially your undergrad college plays a very important role uh, in shaping you up as a person and you are also the placement coordinator at your uh, college yeah. so how did your undergrad days uh, shape, i mean shape you up what kind of experiences you had there it uh my like dtu in dtu i met like the most i i mean like knowledge hungry and like super excited aggressively passionate about you know people who just love what they are doing so somehow it just brushes on to you you know you right. understand like what people think and what kind of competition or you would say com- i i find competition is a positive but don't take it as a negative thing okay so what kind of competition is out there like you feel that where you are lagging behind like uh, if you're sitting at home and you're thinking okay i am the best person in my particular class so that's not going to cut it out right so when you go to colleges and meet people from you know all over india coming together and you know discussing a lot of ideas so it you know it just you know you understand these kind of things like people what people are doing and how they are you know what kind of things they are pursuing and uh, what excites them and it opens up a lot of opportunities for you and uh, when you are a place like when i was a placement coordinator so at that particular time the, that was one of the most responsible activities that to do during <laughs> like i mean it is a love and hate relationship with the placement coordinator in every university i guess so uh, but i took it with like the like from like the ethics thing that started then and there only like i started reading about ethics like from that time so that's how i got interested in decision making and the whole process i cannot iterate you uh, iterate everything to you right now in a very succinct manner but you understand like everything has 
the like dots, just, all dots connect up. Yeah, correctly. yeah. So just like my error logbook, everything works that. So I I try to understand wherever whatever I pursue. So uh, there, when I was pursuing that, um, uh, when I was working as a placement coordinator, there after that I was also given the opportunity to work as a grievance head. So grievance head, like anyone who has any grievance regarding their placement, so I had to come to me and you know I had to uh, work on that. So. Uh, everything at that point of time, that ethics thing, whole thing, you know, culminated. And whatever I pursued, when I, even when I was working in HPCL, I used to try to understand at every point, okay, what is my conflict of interest here? And uh, how, uh, like, if I do this, would it affect me subconsciously? I started reading a little about psychology as well, like how, you know, influence. Like, there is uh, one book, Influence, if you might have heard. Yeah, I don't yeah. know right now so yeah i read about that and how people influence you and you know how subconsciously you get it. so it's just natural very naturally i you know learn everything learn throughout the way it, it was never like i just you know wanted something uh, you know to impress somebody or to earn more at a certain point of time i just go with the flow for now <laughs> i i mean someday i might uh, be excited about a lot of money or anything but yeah initially now uh, I, I just feel that it just went into the flow I mean I just tried to learn wherever I could so that's how it worked for me uh, very I mean uh, very nice to hear that because uh, I mean you you were able to also uh, take us to through some extent how uh, you're able to relate ethics your decision making back to your days <laughs> i mean someone who has been through that uh, will definitely be able to relate and uh, someone yeah. who is uh, i mean obviously when you're going into your mba there would be placement committees and all so even <laughs> graduates i mean who, even yeah. people who are going there uh, they'll be able to relate yeah. to all things and they really actually uh, uh, help you understand who you are uh, truly as a person deep inside so mm. that you'll be able to know better i mean anybody if anybody is pursuing anything like your day to day life like everything has a re- like some learnings to it that's how i see it. so uh, even that uh, like college time every person taught me something my whole placement team they were a bunch of really hard working you know um, super passionate people so whenever i used to talk i felt that okay i'm i am lagging somewhere okay i have to do more uh, to you know match up to those standards and that's how you know try to progress with that kind of challenges yeah and i think you spoke a very important i mean very uh, good point about uh, competition i mean yeah you took it in the right spirit maybe what you are trying to refer was the level of excellency that people around you try to bring in actually rubs off on you and you also try to i mean you you try to know that okay there are still better things to do there is improvement that you can uh, do for your own self those so that's why uh, someone who is uh, even even in their 11th 12th standards that's the whole point of you trying to go into a good college because you'll be in a very good atmosphere and then uh, yeah. not just one you, of the thing yeah, yeah that motivates like me or i think should motivate anybody to pursue an mba from any of the top universities or, or colleges is that the kind of people you meet there it it is like um, even for you as like when i talk to you i understand like what you are thinking and you know i feel that connect with you so it is just that i want to be surrounded by people like who i can learn from more because there is lot of i feel like everyone has this you know array where they are good at something they are bad at something so there is a lot of scope for improvement for everyone and uh, getting uh, into an institute good uh, okay average depends on the rankings does not really matter if you are really passionate you find the right set of crowd you learn from them i think that's the best thing yeah. and uh, avijit i mean throughout this journey uh, you would be having friends mentors and seniors and especially uh, while you're preparing you would be needing some uh, kind of uh, guidance and all to help you out in making less mistakes so that you will be yeah, on yeah. the path so who were some of the people uh, that uh, you relied upon or you had i mean you had conversations with yeah so uh, for me uh, if, like the uh, my like uh, you won't believe but my managers and the people in my uh, <laughs> in my company they were also very much you know uh, kind of enthusiastic as in like they motivated me like every point of time because my manager he told me that if you do not pursue 
uh, your studies or MBA or anything right now, you might not be able to do it later because if you stop studying, that you won't be able to catch up to the kind of things, right? You will have to do executive and that's not so good. So like we used to have a lot of discussions, me, my manager, I had a lot of, lot of friends in HPCL who like some of them are now in IES. So everyone was pursuing something. So like all of us used to discuss our ideas. Like uh, I had a bunch, I have a, I have a gang of three friends from HPCL. So one of them is in IES, another one is still in HPCL and me. So what, like we used to like talk on conference calls like once in two weeks or so, like every time for hours on hours. And each one of us had one topic of our interest. Like I would talk about what is happening in the economy. Uh, my other friend would talk about history and another friend would talk about the general politics that is happening. Do you understand? Like that's how uh, I, you know, it, it was never a sense like, okay, I have to do this or that. It was just a simple plain conversations and you just learn through the conversations. But again, it is about the crowd. You learn from them. So you improve in the process. And, uh, Apart from that, yes, I did uh, have some guidance. Uh, I mean, I took the mock test from uh, 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 Time and Career Launchers uh, in uh, October and that's how I prepared throughout. And uh, even my brother, younger brother, he was also preparing for a CAD. So he had, like, he was going to the coaching. So whenever I had doubts, I would just write them down in his notebook and ask him to ask those doubts. <laughs> I had a very less time, so I had to do as much as I could. I could not join coaching, I could not join anything. And personally, I never felt, you know, as per se, coaching institute is going to teach me anything because CAT is more about logic and less about, you know, rote learning or that kind of thing. So that's how things work. And I have been, like, everyone has been super supportive to me. My friends were like, there are a lot of friends, okay. some really cool, some far, but everyone is like, I told you, like when I was in placement committee, as well as all the people from my college, all of them are really super passionate, whatever they are doing. So it, you know, it, you know, just pushes you to work harder and, you know, that kind of things. And there is ample number of resources online, I guess. So if someone wants a solution of entire book, then it is available, but what what is how sane you can keep yourself during the preparation, I guess. Correct. Right. And uh, Abhijit, you're also, I mean, you also write occasionally and uh, I've gone through some of your uh, blogs and and I think, uh, I mean, does, uh, do you feel that uh, your uh, writing sometimes uh, helps you think clearly because you come across someone who thinks clearly between the lines, who tries yeah. to understand. So, uh, how, I mean, uh, how, how did that interest of writing start? Is, is it because uh, that you read a lot or? Say so sometimes you feel that you cannot communicate a few things to everybody. Like, uh, I have like your ideologies, how you think the world functions. And, you know, sometimes you think beyond those lines, beyond that box. And you just don't feel like sitting in front of anybody and blabbering and being like, okay, what are you talking about? So that's where the whole confusion and everything crops up. So if you write those things down in a, you know, in a coherent manner, and it does not matter if it means anything to anybody. See, whenever I write, I don't think what other person might be thinking about them writing. I write because it just makes me feel, you know, just makes me write my ideas very coherently. So whenever I go back to that particular writing, I can think very well as to what I was going through at that point of time. It is kind of an emotional log somewhere emotional as well as, you know, ideological log. So uh, if you, even if you read my blog, then you will understand that, uh, from the very first post to the end of the post, there's a very much transaction where in the beginning you will see a starting of a journey. In the middle, you see a lot of confusion regarding ideological standards. And you see that I was, when I started making decisions about taking risks in life, so even that would reflect on the blog. So I think it just makes you more, uh, I think, uh, well worth you their own thinking, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very uh, well said, Abhijit. And uh, I think definitely you should keep, uh, I mean, keep keep on uh, writing. <laughs> I mean, I've gone through some of them and uh, they were really good. So, uh, Abhijit, I mean, obviously uh, you've been through this journey and what would your advice be to someone who is going through this path? And there are a few people who just go in 
thinking in one dimensionally but uh, you come across someone who thinks from different angles tries to test out things see whether it is really the thing that you want because you're an engineer you could have maybe gone for other things but then you realized finance is something and then you also tested it out and then uh, <laughs> tried yes. to try to see whether it was there so what would your advice be to someone who is first of all thinking why why they should be doing an mba and after they decided what kind of things th- that they should be doing not just to crack at per se but also so that they'll be better uh, even when they are getting into the top b schools or any other colleges um see my advice is very very simple to anybody like you have to know like where your interest lies don't be uh, just uh, get pursued by these placement figures average packages or you know these kind of things are very dubious so when you go there sometimes they might not work for you so uh, and mba colleges uh, what i have heard i i still not experience it will start soon but what i have heard well uh, they are very aggressive in terms of how you know we study and people are always working day and night so if you are not passionate about such a thing so you won't be able to give your best in certain situation and be it mba be it an ms or anything like whatever you want to pursue i have friends who have gone to ms and they are doing amazing things like they are doing really good in whichever field they are so just you know you can test waters see um, everyone should never think that there is some end of the line like okay i got a job it's over for me i can you know sit at home get my pay- paycheck by the end of the month and that's how my life is go on uh, will go on uh, it should be very you know explorative in nature you should explore you know where you can improve um, like for me it has always been like uh, i like new challenges so in the first year okay i came to college it was fun second year i pursued uh, dramatics i was in the dramatic society then uh, then in the third year i did a research paper in artificial intelligence then in the fourth year i was in the placement com so um, it is like you know experience challenging yourself you know just getting out of that zone of you know the comfort zone because uh, you have to grow at the end and uh, don't think that okay if i'm getting low marks high marks blah 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 blah, blah. It, it does not really matter if you are good at what you are doing wherever you go be it i am be it excel be it sp gen mdi top me any any of these any of these institutes for matter i have seen people uh, like who have grown like anything from they were, they were not even from some you know well known institute or something and they are at the vp kind of positions ceos and everything so yeah, i think passion is what drives them so it's all about passion and it it should be very clear in your head why you are pursuing certain thing and money is not a motivator trust me my friend it is not a motivator at all it can motivate you to a certain point ha uh, for 5 5 days a week or two after that it just fades away you have to have a reason for why you're doing a certain thing so uh, every day you wake up in the morning there has to be a reason why you wake up so it has to be really exciting you know okay i am doing this today i do that today and this corona virus time has taught me that very well <laughs> like because you are sitting at home that you have to a very clear cut schedule otherwise you just don't feel like waking up so that's how it is i mean um, you want to do mba uh, if you are really passionate about management you want to switch your careers if you want to um, you know get in a room with a bunch of people and discuss what business and you know uh, corporate feel like yeah per- perfect go for an mba and if you are a person who is doing really well in your job and uh, might uh, get uh, amazing promotions then maybe mba is not for you and you don't need to go by the you know normal path of pursuing an mba to achieve success so it is entirely a personal choice and you should not feel bad about anything and even if you tried you left your job and it not work out for you it happens i was very uh, i lucky i would say that uh, it did not happen with me Uh, i could get through because even like time like, admission process is very uncertain at most of the uh, things because you don't know what the other person and there are a lot of variables involved in that so even if you don't get through and if you have a very clear vision why you want to do mba pursue again don't think too much okay uh, 
what will this look like in my CV? One year down, two year down, I was preparing. What if, but why, why? There's no point that you'll think later. Just crack the thing first and think about these things later, I guess. That's the best thing because too much thinking sometimes, you know, uh, it's just not good. Just pursue whatever you feel like, go for it. The risks are involved with higher returns. That's how the entire more risk, more return until I, you are doing something entirely stupid. <laughs> uh, very well said, Abhijit. I think, uh, I mean, uh, the point about that, the reason has to be uh, from from inside you. It's just not about the money or the institute mm -hmm. that you're going to do because a lot of other external factors are there. But uh, what you do, what kind of choices you make, how hard you work, are you working on the right things? These all are under your, under your control. Absolutely. So don't think about the externalities. Uh, think about what you really want. Explore. Find out uh, what you really want to work and on. And don't get into peer pressure. Absolutely. Like what my friend is doing. He's doing MBA, so I must do MBA. No, no, no. Please don't do that. Because uh, like a lot of people function that way. And it does not go well for them. And they feel dejected after that. And it's not good. Because there is no dearth of opportunities in this world. There are infinite of them. And everyone must know that. Like, that is one thing I want to communicate through your channel, I guess. Like, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. Uh, like, I think, uh, I mean, very well uh, pointed out, Avijit, about that point. I think at the end of the day, you'll be paid if you're being uniquely you. Uh, we are living yes. in multiple times now. There are a lot yes. of opportunities, like Avijit is saying. We are living with, uh, I mean, the technologies that we are having, I mean, connecting with people. Abhijit is sitting somewhere else. I'm sitting somewhere else. We are able to have a great uh, chat. So think about all these things. Abhijit has uh, shared some uh, very good insights, all these advices. So these are applicable, not just even if you're an MBA aspirant or not, even if you're just trying to mm -hmm. grow your career or have a good uh, professional growth. So all these pieces of advice would definitely be helpful. Thank you, Abhijit. And uh, I'm looking forward to you, uh, interview you again in the coming uh, years, maybe in the mid of your uh, MBA journey or post that. Yeah, and yeah, thank for, you, sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for taking out the time. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice meeting you, Ajay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ajay.